Hello everyone. On the Sundays of Easter season this year, we read some important passages from the book of Revelation. According to early tradition, on some time around the year 95 AD, during the persecution of Christians, John the Apostle was allegedly banished by the Roman authorities to the Greek island of Patmos where he wrote the book of Revelation. John himself writes in the book that while he was on the island and praying on the Lord's day, which most Christians assume to be Sunday on the day of Christ's resurrection, he heard a loud voice. And when he turned to see who was speaking to him, he saw someone like the Son of Man, that is, Jesus Christ, wearing a long robe and a gold sash and standing among the lampstands. When he fell at Jesus' feet in worship, Jesus comforted him with a touch of love and instructed him to write down all that would be revealed to him. Jesus also reassured him that he was the first and the last and the living one. He died, but he is alive forever, and he possesses the keys of death and Hades. Friends, in last week's text, we read John's vision of heaven, which in fact had begun in chapter 4 and for which John was taken into heaven. Describing the vision, John said that he saw God on the throne and the great hosts of angels, elders, plus all the creatures in the whole universe surrounding the throne and heard them singing praises to both God and the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. To Jesus in particular they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Friends, in today's text, John continues to describe his vision of heaven. He recounts that he saw a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Friends, there are four things that we must note about in this verse. 1. The people John describes as the great multitude represent people from all parts of the world with faith in Jesus Christ. 2. White robes are the clothing of the heavenly inhabitants. 3. Palm branches commonly represent joy and victory. 4. Much of this imagery parallels Jesus' triumphal and victorious entry into Jerusalem before his passion and death. However, while the people who had accompanied Jesus into Jerusalem deserted him later, the people celebrating the victory of Christ before the throne of God were those who had remained faithful to him until the end. This was indeed confirmed by an elder who was engaged in heavenly worship. In fact, in the verses before this, which are omitted in today's reading, the elder himself had asked John who these people in heaven with white robes were and where they came from. Only when John replied that he did not know, the elder explained to John that these are the ones who survived the time of great distress. They had washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Friends, how can we understand this verse? First of all, tribulation and distress in the Bible are general terms denoting the suffering of God's people. Actually, the Bible tells Christians to expect suffering. For instance, the Apostle Peter admonishes all Christians in his letter not to be surprised when persecution comes or think that some strange thing is happening to them when they are persecuted as Christians. So does the Apostle Paul in his epistles as he speaks of his suffering for Jesus Christ in a very real and hopeful way. Moreover, 
Jesus himself had told his disciples that they would be called to suffer for his sake. He had even warned them that they would be killed just as the prophets of the Old Testament were killed by the Israelites. So, the survivors of the great distress in John's vision referred to those who had endured severe trials, persecution and affliction for their faith in Christ. Among them, John probably saw his own contemporaries who were martyred for their refusal to worship the Roman Emperor and the other idols. Secondly, and literally speaking, we do not use blood to clean or wash clothes. We use only water with soap. So, washing the clothes and making them white in the blood is strange and highly paradoxical. If this is the case, what does it mean to be washed white in blood? Friends, the word white occurs 75 times in the Bible and it has several representations or meanings. White is often used to depict purity, holiness and the deliverance of man from sin. It also represents the absolute purity of God and of Christ. It is a symbol of God's judgment on the white throne as well as God's victory over the powers of evil. Additionally, white is often associated with the righteousness of God, sometimes specifically to Christ's righteousness. When Jesus cleanses from sin, he makes us white as snow by giving us his righteousness. So, in the metaphorical or figurative sense, the garments made white in blood of the Lamb can be understood in two ways. One, these are the people who had since baptism fully given their lives to Jesus Christ in obedience and submission and accepted even death. Two, these are the people who had been cleansed by the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, these people withstood and overcame the tribulations not by their own strength and efforts, but by the redeeming power of Jesus Christ. For this reason, the elder further told John that these people were given the privilege to stand before the throne and worship God day and night in his temple. They would be under God's protective care. They would neither hunger or thirst anymore. They would be led by the Lamb of God to springs of life-giving water, and their tears would be wiped away by God. In other words, those who are standing before the throne of God have left the earth and all its turmoil and are now in the presence of the Lord, where there is no hunger, thirst, pain, suffering, sorrow or death, but only joy and peace. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. This scene of John's vision serves as a reminder of the glory in heaven which awaits all Christian martyrs. If we are like those persecuted first century Christians, in that we also endure to the end in our faith in Jesus, we will have the privilege of being before God's throne and of serving Him. God then will clothe us in the white robes of the righteousness of Christ. We will be God's people and God will be everything to us. He will be our spiritual food and shelter. He will remove every bit of sadness from our face. Hunger, thirst, pain, suffering and death will be a thing of the past. 2. In heaven, we will be united with all those who have followed Jesus on the way in overcoming sin, from the first disciples right down to our family members, from all nations and tongues, just as God had promised to make Abraham's children as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sands of the seashore. Therein will reign perfect peace and unity, untainted by sin. We will never again be made sorrowful by our sinful tendencies. Instead, we will naturally radiate goodness, love, joy and peace. We will be with God and His Son, Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, and all the saints for eternity. Amen. God bless you.